Welcome to the Community Sync for May 2023. Um, today, we're going to go over um, some community stats and updates. And then I'm going to pass it to Albert to talk about Star Rocks and how you can query Hoodie data with it. So let's go over uh, stats and updates. So on the stats and updates, we've had over 139 um, pull requests. We have 62 open pull requests. We've closed 75 issues and we have 39 new issues. I know the team has been working hard in resolving a lot of the GitHub issues and merging um, new PRs and stuff. So we should, you should be seeing um, a lot of momentum in that direction as well. In terms of upcoming um, updates and releases, we are working on um, RFC 69, which is a major release for Hoodie One Dot Alpha. Um, if you're not in the community, please join. Please join the community Slack to vote on certain features and stuff for Hoodie One Dot Alpha. In terms of the roadmap, we're working on a 0.14.0 marriage release, which includes the record level index, um, Spark 3.4 support, and improve uh, usability, reliability, um, and hoodie tables should be after 14, 0 0.14.0 and on, hoodie should, uh, should support primary key lists hoodie tables, if you will. So um, in terms of, uh, in terms of um, uh, so in terms of um, in terms of reliability, improved usability, we change the default write operations on some of the things being run. For example, for Spark SQL insert into it will now default into bulk insert instead of just insert mode. And Spark data source write uh, should also default to bulk insert. In terms of improved reliability, we have bug fixes and patches. For example, there was um, some issues with the custom uh, deletion um, or custom payload deletion, and that has actually been fixed. There was also some data inconsistency issues and corner issues with the global indexes um, that has also been fixed as well. So um, this is if you want to join the community and get involved, um, please, uh, you can click on the QR, you can scan the QR code and join. And if you uh, use um, Apache Hoodie, please give us um, a star on the GitHub repo. And I'll um, stop sharing my screen and I'll pass it to Albert for, um, for the introduction of what is Star Rocks and how you can query Hoodie data with it. Albert. All right, thank you. So let me, let me get this going. All right. So I hope everybody can see my slides. Yes. You're yes. good. Yes, I'm good. Okay. All right. So um hi, my name is Albert Wong. Uh I'm the devil uh, developer advocate at uh seller data. So seller data is actually the commercial provider for, for Star Rocks. Uh, background is I'm a Java developer by trade, uh, worked a long time at Red Hat, worked a long time at MongoDB, and now I'm over at uh, Seller Data. So a little bit about what Seller means. Seller means quick in, uh, in Greek. Uh, that's how we picked our name. And what we pride ourselves is that we're a high performance analytical database. We're fast on fast, right? So... Just three things to think about when you think about um, Star Rocks, which is our open source uh, OLAP database. High performance, we're able to go and in many cases be three to five times to 10 times faster uh, in terms of query performance. There's a lot of little engineering tricks we did in order to make that all happen. Uh, we also su support the ability to do joins uh, on real-time data. That's, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more. And we're very, very scalable. So we've got customers that actually are in the petabyte range that are using our database to feed their real-time systems. Uh, the other thing uh, I'd like you to think about is that uh, what we did uh, as, our, as our open source strategy was that we adopted the MySQL protocol. So whatever you can do in MySQL, whatever products you use in MySQL, you can just instantly connect to, to our system and use those same type of tools. 
And the last thing is a little bit why we're called Seller Data and Star Rocks. So Star Rocks is the open source project. We donated to the Linux Foundation, all the trademarks and the IP. So as a result, we as a company can't call ourselves uh, Star Rocks anymore. And that's why we picked the name Seller Data. So uh, Star Rocks is part of the Linux Foundation. You can see us up as, as one of the projects on the page. All right. So talking a little bit about use cases before I dig uh, dig into uh, a little bit about querying uh, hoodie tables. So uh, a lot of times when people are looking at our product, they're really looking around maybe on cases of real-time uh, data feeds. Like this is places where we're talking about is, um, say for instance, fraud analysis, security dashboarding, uh, security alerting, uh, ad bidding from that standpoint, times where uh, you need freshness of data, you need to go and look at current data along with historical data and get to uh, a number, an actionable number from that standpoint or actionable uh, thing that you can go and do with, it, with that data. So in the case that we have, uh, talk a little bit about Airbnb. Airbnb has their own metric platform. Uh, they basically store data in one of those table formats, right? Uh, and they use Druid, Presto, and, and Spark to basically uh, query that data. Uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of different metrics. There's a lot of different uh, dimensions with the data. And it's very, very complex in terms of, um, of having to go and build various pipelines for, for all those pieces of data, right? And as you kind of know, uh, Products like Druid and ClickHouse are not necessarily very good at doing joins. And that's why you have to go and do denormalization. De uh, that is a strategy of denormalization since the 90s, right? Everybody kind of knew that in order to get speed, you kind of denormalize. So it's not necessarily a new idea from that standpoint, right? Um, so with what Airbnb, they tried the tried that model of denormalizing everything, and then they used Druid, Presto, Spark. Um, we came on in uh, with Star Rocks, and the nice thing about it is because you don't have to go and denormalize tables, so they simplify their data pipelines, uh, ability for them to go and uh, handle concurrency, and they can get is less environment, less servers uh, needed to go and constantly massage is the, the data pipelines. Right, don't need that that much anymore. Don't need as much infrastructure to go and support the query, uh, the the query patterns or the query loads from that standpoint. We've got a lot more information. I don't want to bore you with uh, all the necessarily minutia details, but if you search on our website on StarRocks.io, uh, you can find uh, a YouTube video of where the uh, Airbnb engineers talk about an hour about, you know, their use case why they you know what they tried uh, in terms of uh, gaining performance and then what they evaluate in terms of products and then why why they settled onto star rocks right so moving on uh so what is star rocks from that standpoint a little i i mentioned a little bit uh that um that uh, we are an analytical database right uh typically people see us in three major categories right uh, they either evaluate us as a traditional OLAB database, right? Uh, and this is kind of in the situation where we're like seen as like an open source version of, of Snowflake, right? Or NetEase or whatever the, those traditional OLAB databases. And we can play in that space if you want to, right? Uh, the other use case that we have is uh, providing warehouse-like capabilities on top of data lakes, right? So the idea here is that you leave your data at rest, you don't go and import the data, right? And maybe you are using hoodie underneath or one of the other uh, mentioned uh, table, uh, table specs on out there on this chart, right? You can use all those, you connect to it remotely, leave it in the data lake from that standpoint, and you use it as a uh, query engine on top of all those other data formats, right? So that's a big other use case that we have. I would say that uh, maybe half of our community users are, are in the data lake house space, right? I'd say a good portion from that standpoint. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we have the last use case uh, of real-time analytics, right? And this is where 
um, kind of where we focus our engineering at to be different from the marketplace. And what we mean by real-time analytics is here where you're ingesting data in real time. We're talking about here in sub-second or low single digit seconds. And I wanna be able to query that data in sub-second time, right? So this is like what I mentioned about is powering real-time dashboards like ad bidding, uh, which was one of the original use cases that that Star was, Starbucks was uh, built on, or real-time dashboards like what uh, Airbnb is doing for monitoring data, right? Or in other situations where uh, you want real-time transportation data or any of those type of use cases from that standpoint. Now, one thing caveat I wanted to go say is that the real-time analytics in this piece is really um, on internal tables. Uh, however, we do support merge on read hoodie tables. Oh. So that's where merge on read, you can get semi real-time analytics, right? Semi and uh, semi real-time feeds. So we do support that in, 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 in Star Rocks, right? Just to give you a, a little eye chart on performance, this is TPC results. You guys have probably seen TPC results from many, many different vendors, right? And so this is us with Star Rocks, not using our internal tables, uh, connecting to an external catalog, right? So this is one of those table specs that I mentioned in the previous slide, right? With cash block on. And you can see when we go across as the TPC results, we're 3x to 50x times faster. And that's because we're a traditional data warehouse in that sense, right? We do cost-based optimization. We do uh, SQL query, uh, query planning. We also have this thing called SIMD, which is um, single instruction, multiple data. It's a way for us to be able to do multiple operations within one CPU clock cycle. That makes it much, much more faster from that standpoint. And the cache block is essentially for us to cache a lot of the results once you once it comes into the, the database system, right? And I'll show you this in the demo. So you can get, actually see the differences when cache block is turned on. And you can see the, the difference in speed. So uh, let's get to the demo, right? Uh, so we have a demo here of Star Rocks with Apache hoodie. Uh, if you have a, uh, a camera right now, you can follow along on the QR code. The QR code will send you to a tutorial we wrote off of GitHub. And basically the idea with it is that you're gonna go and basically do the Apache uh, hoodie quick start, right? So if you've ever done it, it's it's the Docker setup that you have, right? It, it uses Docker Compose and it spins up a, a full hoodie environment. We're gonna modify that uh, default YAML uh, and add is the Star Rocks image into that Docker Compose, right? So now that Docker, uh, the Docker Compose, when we do a, when we start it on up, it'll actually load up the, the Star Rocks environment alongside all the, the hoodie uh, containers that are there, right? Then we're going to go do the, the Apache hoodie quick start. So the quick start, uh, if you've done it before, is like you create it, you load some data uh, through Kafka, and then, then you actually go and ingest the data and you actually make a bunch of different tables. Uh, one is the uh, COW, the very common, uh, you know, create on write, and then, then you're actually going to see the merge on read tables from that standpoint, right? And then once you're done with the hoodie quick start, we're gonna go and then log into Star Rocks, add the hoodie external uh, catalog, and then uh, actually query the data. So that's that's the demo. So if you've got the quick start, you're like 80% all the way there to go and do the demo that I'm about to show, right? All right, so uh, I'm gonna bounce out a little bit here, right? Uh, so if you've done the, the Apache hoodie uh, quick start here, you kind of know from that standpoint is that uh, you first go and uh, clone the, the, the hoodie uh, project, and then you start at the demo cluster. So I'm going to start up the demo cluster here. All right. Uh, I'm using uh, the, the newer MacBooks uh, that are uh, not Intel based. So that's why I'm going to use the switch to go and do the um, the, the Mac 
Albert, do you want to make the terminal a little bigger? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, plus, plus, yeah, thanks. More bigger, yeah. I think it's still kind of small. More bigger. Yeah, better. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So it takes a while, uh, as you know, to take all the uh, containers on up, right? Uh, let's see here. I can kind of see, you can kind of see here, it's starting on up, right? 40 seconds ago. Um, there are a lot of containers in the quick start, but you guys kind of know that it's pretty cool because it's it's a full hive environment uh, with hoodie on the back, right? So it's pretty cool. All right. So now we've got the container set on up. So what's the next thing you go do, right? So it says here, you're gonna go publish a bunch of uh, uh, items into Kafka, right? So I already got that here, right? So that will go and pipe in a bunch of stuff. Let's query it really qu quick. So great, there's now some topics in the system, right? So that kind of gets me past this section, right? Now I have to log into the Docker container and have uh, Hoodie ingest the data. So log on in, right? Run this Spark job, right? This does the COW, right? Um, and then there's going to be a second job that's going to query the merge on read, right? So nothing special here. I'm just copying and pasting straight off of the hoodie quick start, right? And then I can throw up a browser here. And voila, you can see now it created a bunch of data, right? The timestamp matches the today's timestamp, right? So that's the COW, and here's one for the merge on read. So merge on read, you can see a bunch of data here, right? And then the next thing you got to go do is now you got to sync that data with the Metastore, right? So great, got one synced. We've got another sync for the merge on read, right? And now you should be able to run is SQL, right? So now I can run the beehive. And I can go show tables. And now I have all the various tables. And I can then go do like a, a select count. Right. So I'm going to do a select count, right? And see, there's 170 records, about three seconds, right? And if I run it again, it, you know, it kind of drops a little bit to about five, right? Because now the, the results are a little bit more cached, right? All right, so great. Now we've gone is like we've loaded data into the system. Theoretically now is that you have is a hoodie environment with a bunch of data in there. So let me exit out of this, right? And now let's go over to, oh, I forgot to show you, right? So um, the part where I modified uh, the environment, right? So if I go to compose and I VI the Docker, uh, the Mac, YAML, right? What I basically did was that I added this section. So this is the only thing that I modified in the uh, Docker Compose, is that uh, we have a special Docker image that's called our all-in-one. Basically, the real architecture, we separate the front end and the back end. So the storage nodes from the, the query nodes from that standpoint. But in this situation, we have is an all-in-one image. And, and I just inputted this one line so it would run it alongside in the same Docker network as all the other a hoodie quick start containers, right? And I just then mapped ports. All right, so let's go back. All right, so 
let's go and now run is the SQL commands, right? So here you can kind of see I'm just using normal C, uh, MySQL client, port 9030, which is what the port that we go use. It's on local host uh, because it's with the rest of the uh, Docker containers, right? So if I go show catalogs, I only have is the internal catalogs. That would be to our internal tables, right? And going to now my uh, my um, 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 tutorial, right? We've already done is the you know create the hoodie environment, add the the Docker image, you know we queried uh beehive we got the data that says 197 back right so now i need to go and at the uh at the external catalog so the first command is basically create an external catalog and i have to put in that it is hoodie and my login information and whatnot and the second command is basically now setting my default catalog to be hoodie and then use the default tables that are in there right so if I execute this, all right, if I show tables, I actually see all the tables from that standpoint. You can see it's the same three tables that we actually did on the hoodie side, right? Now, uh, I'm going to run this next command, which is going to go and do a count. Now, it's going to show an error, and the reason why for that is it's something that uh, I have a PR for. we got to fix it, but I have to, I have to do a refresh command. Uh, refresh so I have to refresh the external table that's only that's only because uh, I've got a PR that I still need to go and submit into it but once you go do that you can now go and query just like the same thing as uh the 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 stock ticker count right and you'll notice that it took 119 seconds so it's a little bit faster than when I did the beehive but if I run this again now it's query block is enabled and so now it drops to 0.1 second, right? So think about it, three seconds. Uh, uh, when I was doing it a hive, it was like three sec or, or spark. It was like three seconds, ran a couple times, and it went down to 1.5 seconds, right? Then in Star Rocks, even just out of the box, it's 1.2 seconds. And then when Query Block is now caching the results, now it's down to 0 0.1 second, right? And I can also do this for the other tables that I have, right? So uh, let's go do it for, like I, I mentioned here, we got show tables here. So let's do the select also, right? Stock ticks more, RO. Also know that I have to refresh the table again, right? So it's gonna give me this error, that's okay. Refresh, refresh the table, whoops, right? And then I can also run it, same thing. So th this is now on the read on, on merge, right? And you could kind of see also that it's, it's also because some of the data is cached, it also drops now even to be lower than 0.1 seconds. So that's it, that's all you had to go do. So if you have a hoodie environment from that standpoint, right um if you do have a hoodie environment all you have to do is just put in a couple commands from that standpoint to add the external table into star rocks set the default catalog in star rocks not to use the internal tables but now use the hoodie catalog right and just query away from that standpoint and so you can query flat tables you can do joins from that standpoint right we also have the ability for you to go and do things like materialize views, right? Uh, it's a little bit still under testing, but uh, our goal here is uh, we've got it in alpha of doing materialized views uh, in terms of batch, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about futures, right? So now that you saw it's really add, easy to add on, I'm going to get its fast queries. I don't have to learn Spark. I can just use SQL from that standpoint. I can do joins from that standpoint. Like, what else are you talking about, Albert? What else can we go do that? You know, we've talked about how Star Rocks is fast, fast, fast. 
So in terms of futures, right, uh, we have no dates on this, but right now we can only currently read, right? Read on various different types of tables. You saw that on COW and, uh, and also on MOR our tables, right? Uh, we're in the process of supporting rights inside of uh, hoodie tables, right? So that way you can have single source of the truth on the lake while getting that single, des single digit or sub-second data freshness from that standpoint, right? Um, that, that's a big, big ask from a lot of our community users. Uh, our next thing, or the other thing that we're also working on too, is that we only support batched and scheduled materialized views for hoodie, right? Uh, and so if you're using MOR tables, you're probably going to get more fresher data by just doing those queries directly against the MOR tables. Uh, so in this situation, this is where we want to get that types of parity. Uh, on materialized views. And our eventual end goal here is that we want to be able to provide materialized views in a hybrid way. So say, for instance, you want to do materialized views on internal tables and on hoodie tables and one of the other table specs that are on out there, right? So you can do a materialized views across all those different tables, table specs, wherever they're at, and get sub-second uh, refreshed data on those views. And what does that mean? Uh, easier pipelines, you can support joins, you don't have to go, and you can do transformations inside of the database from that standpoint, right? Instead of you have to doing all this, like, you, you know what I mean, pipeline engineering that goes on all over the place, right? So that's it. Uh, that's it. What I have uh, for, to show you for today. Uh, you can find the presentation off of our uh, this Bitly. Uh, we also have a free uh, cloud tier if you want to go use. Um, it's free, 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 um, free as in free as in you can go use it for free <laughs> or use our VMs for free. Um, so uh, Seller Data provides is a uh, is a managed service offering. That's why we can go and provide that. If you want to go stick with the um, the the uh, the uh, uh, containers, uh, the Starbucks containers, like what I did in this demo, feel free to go do that. But if you wanted to go and see the cloud service, uh, it's out there at cloud.sellerdata.com. And uh, if you have time, please join our Slack channel to, to find out more what we're doing with, uh, with Hoodie. Uh, would love to go and see you there. And um, yeah, feel free to ask questions. I think, Poe, do you want to unmute yourself? Um, I think you have some questions. Or is Poe there? Oh, maybe a job. So Poe had a couple of questions. He had one of the questions he asked is, which data uh, catalogs the Star Rock support? Yeah, so we support the four major uh, data lakes, right? So Hoodie, Iceberg, Hive, and Delta Lake. And then the other question he had was, can you query real time, uh, merge on read, uh, real time views? The views part, I haven't necessarily tested yet. Um, I've got to go and look back at that. Um, but that's a, that's a good question. I'll definitely, if if Poe, you if you you got my info, so you know, and I'm also on the hoodie uh, uh, Slack instance. Just message me, uh, and I'd be happy to go and find you that answer. Yeah, I'll make an intro. No worries. Um, I'll leave it open to questions. Um, please unmute yourselves and feel free to ask questions. I, I have one question. So um, uh, this is Adit there. Uh, so ha like this qu good query performance, uh, have you tested with a larger data set? And does it run on a distributed system under the hood? Yeah, so let me uh, let me answer the second question first, right? So does it run on a distributed system? Like, so for the demo here, I basically had a all-in-one Docker container, right? In the real environment, it's more, uh, we recommend, say, for instance, we have this front-end and back-end architecture. So uh, as you can imagine, we use something like the RAF protocol, 
right? Uh, why, that's why everything's in threes, right? <laughs> threes, five, sevens, right? Prime numbers with the exception of, of two, right? Um, and, and so uh, what we what we go do is that if you're talking about our smallest, you know, I would say production cluster, typically it's three front end nodes and three back end nodes. And the back end is, is all replicated, right? So that if one node goes down, data is still available for you to query on nodes two and three and for you to have quorum, right? And as the cluster gets bigger and bigger, then you can go do more, you know, replicated nodes. You can do uh, more copies of the data from that standpoint. Um, architecturally wise, we are not scatter gather, we're MPP. So that's why this kind of having data replication on the back end and for us to know where, where the data nodes are all at or for that piece of replicated copy, we can go to multiple places to go and query that data. Um, so I hope that answers that question a little bit about architecture and distributed, right? So our largest customer, community customer that we know of has a thousand nodes on their back end. It's pretty big. Um, I uh, we have an upcoming video in um, on the Starbucks channel that that talks about this in detail. Um, that's that's uh, being done at it's being recorded during this time. Um, and then going back to your first question, I, I you kind of dropped out a little bit. Uh, could you repeat the first question again? Yeah. So, uh, like. Uh, we were comparing the Beehive query and the Starnox query, right? But it is for a very small data set. So yes. a lot of extra overheads will be there, right? So what I was I wanted to ask is this query performance, does it scale linearly along with the data? Yes. What I meant is like yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so that's so so the question that you asked for is like Okay, Albert, you showed me a great on a, a, like basically a query on only 100, 200 rows from that standpoint. What about if we had like billions of rows with billions uh, uh, and doing a join on billions from that standpoint, right? So we actually have is a blog entry off of starrocks.io uh, uh, that uh, we did actually more TPC data, right? So the like the TPC data that we had up for this one was only one terabyte. We actually have ones of different types from that standpoint, and then you could then you could see actually like where us were doing billions of <clears throat> billions of rows joined with other billions jo joined with another millions from that standpoint, and you can see the performance. But we pride ourselves at. Uh, low um, single digit, if not sub second response times for data that's uh, that's within our database. And when I say within our database, that that is a statement of saying, you know, on local tables, on internal tables, and on external tables, external catalogs like Hoodie. So this is actually uh, Hoodie data from that standpoint. And this was against Trino. Uh, I think a lot of you guys probably know what Trino is, right? It's another database uh, in, in, the, in a similar space, right? So. Sagar had a question. Um, Sagar, do you want me to repeat the question or do you want to uh, ask it live? Yeah, I can I can go. Um, yeah, Albert, the Sagar. Um, first of all, awesome demo. Um, I, I was more curious about the cache. Uh, what does, uh, can, can you little, talk a little bit more about the internals of the cache? Uh, uh, so I, you can check my question. Basically I'm looking for, um, uh, say you had a bunch of uh, Parquet files and uh, these are all 100 MB plus Parquet files for TPCDS uh, tables. Uh, what does the block cache do? Is it further uh, caching smaller and smaller blocks? Um, uh, what's that block size, default block size? And can can someone, depending on the query, uh, does the plan uh, prune which block needs to be scanned? So uh, I'm just trying to make sense of the, the drastic improvements uh, that you're showing here. 
Yeah. So I would say I, I would summarize it more um, more high level than that. I would say that this this cache blocking happens more in the query engine layer, right? Not on the storage side, right? So once you know, as you can imagine, a query comes on in, and then we go through CBO, the cost based optimizer, to rewrite the query as we see fit, and then we pull the data from the S three buckets, right? And then it passes back through. Uh, eventually to the client, right? As it passes back through to the client, right? That's when we start caching some of these results. So that when we, when you go back and execute this query again, right? The, the CBO knows that there is some uh, data that we can re-leverage from that standpoint and then use that as part of the response, right? So, um, you know, I think this is much, much more of a traditional database caching from that standpoint, right? This is not something that is a, a, a is a, 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 a cache for specifically for hoodie, right? On the storage level. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Uh, uh, not just for hoodie, but any part of uh, data yeah. as such. Yeah, um, but it has to run through the system first, right? It has to run through in order for us to go and cache it. Uh, okay, all right. And how do you explain the, uh, uh, so this caching will take effect uh, on the second attempt of running that query. The very yes. first attempt, uh, is there some additional metadata that is maintained, which uh, helps in improving the performance when you compare it with Spark, um, like 1.19 1 seconds versus three seconds, that difference, uh, how do you account for that? Yeah, so, uh, okay, so it, this comes back to the, the specialization that Star Rocks has, right? So I kind of mentioned this in the beginning of the info, uh, video that we talked about performance, right? So there is a feature that we use in the CPU called SIMD, single instructions, okay. multiple okay. data, right? And if you're familiar with this part of the CPU, right, it was originally designed to go and do things like modifying, say, for instance, the volume in a game, right? So you wanted to go, instead of you individually moving, you know, various like notes up one octave from that standpoint and doing a big for loop, you do a scalar operation that does it all as, as one operation, right? They do this also for games where you do like lights, uh, lights inside of the game and other types of video movement, right? From that standpoint. So what we did was that we implemented this type of, so first of all, it was a theoretical uh, academic paper of applying this type of technology to, to databases, right? And we are one of the few databases that took this academic idea and actually implemented. So this is how we get so much performance because in one CPU cycle, you typically do only a read or do only a write. And now we can stack inside of that same CPU cycle, multiple reads, multiple writes, right? And so that's how we get that performance. So where I, I kind of allude to this and I, to simplify it for a lot of people, like for, especially for non-engineer, it's like you doing algebra and I'm doing linear algebra. Uh, it's just like, I'm working on matrices. You're working on a single, single element row, right? And this gets us the performance and it works for um, OLAP databases because we typically do operations on a range of data. This doesn't work in OLTP systems because you're only doing it on an individual row, right? In individual record. So you cannot get this scalar operation, right? Unless you're actually doing a, a mass update of something, right? Or mass insert of like, I'm just changing everything like $100 more, right, from that standpoint. But especially for OLAP systems where you're trying to do roll-ups, you're trying to do, you know, large, like restructuring of the data from that standpoint, this is a really good use case for using those parts of the CPU, right? And that's why we fundamentally get, you know, a much better performance, assuming everything else is the same, right? I mean, all, all databases have a CBO. Right, all databases have some type of of query, you know, uh, acceleration from that standpoint. All of us do caching from that standpoint. So what makes us what makes us truly different, right? It's how we implemented the SIMD. Got it. Got it. Yep. 
Thanks. Uh, are there any uh, uh, blog posts about this? Uh, there is. Uh, most of it is academic papers. <laughs> um, uh, so you can feel right. free to read about it. Um, yeah. And, and there's other things that we go did with that we borrowed, right? So we have like on our, our, we also support like, for instance, primary key, right? And that we borrowed that from Microsoft SQL Server, right? So there's other enhancements that we've done along the way, but I would say the SIMD was the big, big thing. And we're, I can only count on one, less than one hand, the number of databases that actually implement SIMD that we know of. That in, we know in that of. sense, Huri also maintains um, a record key. Does that help uh, Star Rocks in any way? Um, can you like ask among all these lake house uh, uh, formats, uh, Delta, Iceberg, and Huri? Yeah. Uh, Huri uh, so, as far as I know, Huri has Huri is the only one which has this notion of primary key. Uh, uh, it's called Huri record key. Yeah. Uh, so I was just wondering if uh, uh, this is also used uh, in Star Rocks. Yeah. So so as you can kind of see, kind of see in the demo, right, was that we just connected to Hoodie's catalog, right? And so we just import whatever metadata structure they have on the tables, on on whatever else that they they're able to go provide, right? So. You know, I think that question where you're asking about is do you support or not support certain features, right? You know, we're leveraging the 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 hoodie uh, libraries for us to access those tables. So it's it's really what the hoodie provides. Got so it. say for instance, yeah. iceberg provides as a specific thing in iceberg, right? We're just gonna go and use the iceberg libraries to go and interact with that catalog, right? Uh, and you know, and you know, pull out whatever information we need to go do from that standpoint, right? So we, what we would expect uh, is, is that if Hoodie, uh, in a, you know, built something new inside of the, for, for Hoodie users from that standpoint, because we use the libraries, we'll just naturally inherit those abilities from that standpoint. And we'll add on top of it, the, 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 the cache block and the, you know, the, the query engine and the, the cost base optimizer, right? All those mm -hmm. things, vectorize the engine, right? All that other stuff we'll add on top of it, but we'll also do it for all the other table formats too, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks. We have another question from, I believe, do, do, do you want to ask your question or should I repeat it? So he asked, uh, does Star Rocks queries run faster on Hoodie and why? Does Star Rocks uh, queries run uh, faster on Hoodie and why? Um, I would say that because we treat um, all the four delta, uh, all the four different uh, data lakes equally, right? We essentially go and connect to the external catalog, right? we inherit their abilities. So the performance that you're really gathering or you're getting is really underneath from those table format specific implementations, right? And so uh, I think what you're gonna go get is um, uh, it's gonna be a depend statement, right? Depends on what you're storing inside of hoodie versus, you know, maybe, maybe uh, against iceberg, right? Um, you're definitely going to be better than Hive. I'll tell you that part. You're, you're going to definitely be better than that, right? <laughs> but but against those two, I mean, there's a lot of engineering, and they all have con uh, all the other three have a lot of engineering, and they they all have different quirks with them, right? About which one that they're spending more time in. So it, I would say it depends on your use case, right? Um, if the ask here is that, uh, do I have a similar demo with with uh, Iceberg? Yes, I do. <laughs> hey, uh, Albert, uh, thanks for answering the question. I think that there are actually there are several questions embedded in this one. <laughs> Uh, first is, uh, as you said, uh, there could be uh, uh, implying a comparison between different uh, lake, uh, lake house catalogs. Right. 
um, suppose they run similarly, um, maybe. Um, there, there's another side of the questions. Um, uh, so if we run Star, uh, Starbucks uh, query just by itself on Starbucks without any uh, catalog, um, how does that compare with the running on Hoodie or some other? Mm. So it is a question here is if we compare internal tables, right, versus uh, external catalog with Hoodie tables, which one is faster? Is that the question? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, part of it. Yeah. So uh, in our internal testing, uh, internal tables are even faster, right? Okay. Uh, and the reason why is because we don't have to pull from a remote S3 bucket, right? And we have, you know, local attached disk or network attached disk, right? Uh, either an EBS volume that's, you know, in the AWS world, the EBS volume that's attached to the to the instances, right? So you do get better performance, but then you get the problem of like copying data, right? So a lot of people, what they go do is they select select and insert in to the internal tables, right? Uh, or they use Spark, or they use Flink, and then they 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 they, they you know populate the the Star Rocks internal tables. I, I tell people, right, our goal here at, at Star Rocks is to get is parity as much as possible, right? So whether you use internal tables or you use hoodie tables, right? Our goal here is that we're not going to treat one better than the other. We're going to treat try to treat them out equally, but there are just physics problems, right? How how fast data can come out uh, out of S3 buckets, right? Uh, versus how fast that you have is some SSD that's attached to your VM, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it just is, right? It's a physics problem. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? definitely. Uh, that's understandable. So, um, uh, can we query uh, external table directly without uh, help of any catalog? Just uh, oh, oh, uh, so, table so running on S3. Yeah. Right. So the question becomes is that if you can if you can go connect to an external table without a catalog, right? So uh, we used to be able to do that. And there is documentation, outdated documentation on our website that talks about this, but we deprecated uh, a lot of that, right? Uh, we really do need that catalog. Uh, okay. and, and so, uh, I highly suggest that because the catalog is not just um, data from that standpoint, right? It it also has the, a lot of other you know companies or a lot of other open source projects are building maybe a security layer on top of of those, and so um, it, it's going to be valuable, right? That the the catalog is going to be more than just table structures. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sounds great. So, um, uh, what are, uh, what are other benefits we, can we get from using uh, Hoodie or Icebook or something else? Like this kind of catalog. Yeah, or, I th I think the big thing that you're gonna go get is that um, in the situation if you really believe in data lake house, right? Data lake house architecture, right? I mean, the the whole idea here, especially even our idea of data lake house, is that you want warehouse like capability on top of data lakes, right? Uh, on top of S3 buckets, right? Data that's stored in S3 buckets, right? And with the ability of something like Hoodie, right? If data is stored in Hoodie, theoretically, right? You can throw away and take another query engine like Spark or Trino or whatever. And you'd be able to say, I don't like the performance of, of Star Rocks. I'll throw that query engine away pick another query engine and then connect directly to the catalog and start querying data, right? So that's theoretically the value, right? Uh, and we have a lot of community customers or community users that really believe in that vision, right? They believe in the vision that Hive is kind of deadish, right? It's, it's kind of like, it, it is good in certain use cases, right? And the the new hotness or the new way to go store data now is through Hoodie and through other uh, table formats that are on out there, right? And 
then it becomes, okay, I move all the data. So now I'm, I move all my data out of HDFS and now I'm in these S3 buckets. Then it becomes, uh, who's gonna provide me the best query layer ex uh, experience, right? Uh, is that gonna be Spark? Is that gonna be Photon? Is that gonna be, you know, um, Trino, right? Uh, or is it gonna be Star Rocks, right? Okay. It gives you a lot of options. Uh, so uh, another follow-up question. Um, so in, in your presentation, you mentioned that uh, you currently you can can only read from Hoodie, right? Um, yes. It is um, something uh, like a write into the table. Is that something coming up soon? Yeah, that's that's in our futures, right? That's the one I was talking about, product ideas, right? That we can only do, read now. The futures we want to do writing, right? Yeah. So... Um, I have no ETA on this, right? This is a, a thing that the community has to go and vote on up from that standpoint. I just did a survey uh, a month ago and uh, I need more people from Hoodie oh, to yeah, vote it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a lot, I got, to be honest, I got a lot of iceberg people, right? So I, I would love to see the hoodie people out in force on our our Slack channel, the Star Rock Slack channel, and say, I need hoodie. I want hoodie rights. I want hoodie re view ability, right? I, I need okay. you guys to make some noise. OK, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I can invade the community, don't you worry. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, uh, it's the same thing happening to other catalog uh, support uh, in Star Wars. Um, are you? Uh, are you able to read from all the catalogs, but uh, write is sort of uh, deferred a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So right now, uh, right now, across the board, it is reads from that standpoint. Okay, I see. And uh, we're, we're deciding where we're going to invest in, in the write ability. Um, and to be honest, too, it's like we want to get to writes, right? It's, 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 a, it's a question about prioritizing like mm -hmm. community committers right and and companies that that are willing to pay for or invest in the the engineering right mm -hmm. uh, we, we welcome commits from the community right um we, and we want that interaction right uh i mean show it by show it by you care right show it by commits show it by you know asking for these things on channel uh by you know writing articles right because we're we're kind of moving where the community wants us to go move, right? Um, I can also tell you a little bit that that among the, the the four data lakes, definitely what's lagging is Delta Lake. Like I have very little people who ask me about Delta Lake support, right? But definitely, you know, I would say Hoodie and 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 Iceberg are definitely the most talked about. And along with Hive, right? Along with Hive, because everybody's coming from there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you for your question, June. I think we have time for one more. And this comes from Siva. Siva, do you want to ask your question or should I repeat it from this? Yeah, I, I can take. Sure. So there are two questions. Uh, first one probably should be straightforward. So how does the cache invalidation happen? So let's say if there are repeated queries issued, but in between these two invocations, let's say the underlying system had new commits. Uh, how does Star Rocks uh, invalidate the cache? Is it lazy or real time? Yeah, yeah, we do it. We do both, uh, and it depends on the situation, right? Okay. Um, but the idea there is that we don't want to go and give you bad data. Right. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a work in progress. Uh, we do write test suites against this to make sure that it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some customers that are doing like a gigabyte to 10 gigabytes per minute okay. in terms of writing. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to read from the same, you know, same queries from that standpoint. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To see if like how the data is. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um so far we've been fixing you know issues as they appear right but uh i i can't give you a definite because you know how it is it's kind of like we're you know 
the, the code changes so fast. Yeah, yeah, Our yeah. goal here is that we don't want to give you bad data, right? And and we understand like, you know, caching is not necessarily a brand new thing, right? Yeah. Everybody wants is like fast results. Yes, use cache. How do you make sure that the cache is fresh, yeah, right? Yeah, do you do yeah, an yeah. asynchronous or say, synchronous process to go do yeah. that, right? Yeah. We do both, but, you know, is there situations, edge cases that we might miss? Sometimes, right? Okay. So this is where we need help from the community to kind of say, hey, Albert, you know, I'm doing this load, this query, you know, these are the things that you guys are missing, right? Okay. Uh, okay. And, and we'll fix it. But for, for the most part, mm -hmm. uh, dude, if we got wrong data to our community users, they would abandon us. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. We also, so I come from Hoodie Paw camp. Uh, we take data consistency issues very seriously in general. Yeah. yeah. Okay, one follow-up on similar question. So let's say uh, in between these repeated invocations, the underlying, uh, there is a new commit to the system, mm. but then it is not impacting the query. So let's say there are 1,000 partitions and mm. the query predicate is polling, let's partition one partition two. The new commit is only touching, let's say, partition 10. As a caching layer intelligent enough to not actually do a refresh, but still serve from the uh, cache itself. Yeah, I I, I want to say yes on that, but okay. no on the materialized view. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah, the materialized view is much, much more difficult to go fix, right? To have a consistent view, mm -hmm. okay. right? Okay. Uh, especially on the on the transaction lock level, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but on caching, um, uh, I'm pretty sure yes. <laughs> Okay. 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 So fair. So you do intercept the the uh, comment metadata or something to uh, see that okay, if the query predicate has any impact to it or not. Okay. Yeah. And I would also say that you know it is like there's still optimizations that still may need to be made, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like like most things, our product are like our product from that standpoint is like, we, we understand like uh, SIMD is like our core feature of our query engine, right? And mm -hmm. we've built it, right? But then the thing is, is that due to maybe, you know, um, a customer demand or due to a new set of commits, right? We may okay. re mm -hmm. re-architect or redesign a whole section of, of query code. And maybe we miss that, right? In terms mm -hmm. of the, the, the cache, uh, uh, invalidation or partitioning strategy, right? The, the algorithms that we use to go and do it, right? So I want to say yes, but the thing is, is that also, if you look at how many commits we're getting every single day, it's kind of like saying, like, it's very hard for me to go and say, I absolutely checked every single commit to make sure that that it doesn't happen, okay. right? Okay, 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 got it. Right, but our goal here is that, yes, we want to go and provide that data consistency because what our use cases that people ask us to go do are things like ad bidding, right? So you got to make sure the numbers are right. Or even the thing is like some type of threat analysis or what uh, threat and threat like dashboard or monitoring dashboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously those use cases are, are not as time uh, mm -hmm. and the data is not as important, mm -hmm. but you know, our goal here is yes, we want to go and do it. That the other ones that I know that are more time sensitive are ones where you know money is involved, and in those situations, when they're using Star Rocks as 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 a database, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we do put a lot of emphasis on it because we know that that's that is their use case. Mm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, just one last question. I know we are we are pretty much there. Uh, it's it's more like a product question. Um, have you come across use cases from users? Uh, let's say someone is building a dashboard, mm. uh, not very real time, but let's say it, uh, they run the query once every, let's say 10 minutes or something. Are there use cases where they say that, okay, even if the data is stale by one minute, it's uh, uh, for me, the latency is very important. So it's okay to serve the, the outdated from cache while the cache is getting synced up with the latest set of data rather than uh, uh, taking a hit on the latency. Or everyone is like real time. I want to get the latest set of data. Uh, we tend to focus on customers that want the the latest data, okay. right? Okay. And so we support uh, uh, when we do, like, say, for instance, a primary key or mm -hmm. 
or we're doing real time updates, right? We do delete and insert, yeah. right? So we yeah. basically tombstone and then, then we do an insert on top, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that way you can have as a refresh data, and you know, from the from the view is that you're able to go and see the freshest data first, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I would say we optimize for those use cases. It's not to say we can't do the latter one that you mentioned. It's like, oh, just show from cache while the background is being updated. But mm -hmm. that's also architecturally a little bit more difficult. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Right. It, 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 it's this idea that you're going to have to eventually get syncing for these two, that the real you know, log view versus the real transaction log view versus the view that you, you're currently seeing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think for us is that if we can go, what, what we typically do with customers is, or, or community users, we tell them like, like how, what's your ingestion rate? What's your query patterns? Okay. And so that we can design the partition partitioning of the data correctly so that mm -hmm. when you do the ingestion, we can do it ingestion. I think we did like, one of our community users is doing like 10,000 loads every second because every okay, okay. every partition was another was one of their customers mm. or something like that it was some something to that effect okay so okay. they wanted to do like you know 10,000 every single time and so you know it, it was a you know a way around some of the issues that they that they perceived was you know what they wanted to go design right mm. um Ultimately, I think it um, it a lot of it is a depend statement. I always say, like, first of all, is like, do you have a real time analytics use case? You know, uh, you know, how fresh do you want the query? How fast do you want to do the ingestion? And then how fast do you want the the the, the freshness to go happen? And given that kind of you know base understanding, then we can go and help design how the how the table structure should be, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks a lot for clarity. Cool. All right. I think this wraps it up and brings us up, to, up, us up to time for the Community Sync. Please join us um, next month on the upcoming Community Sync, and I'll share those details later. And Albert, thank you for um, the presentation and, and what Star Rocks and how you can query Hoodie data with Star Rocks. Well, thank you for having me, Nadine. All right, everyone. I'll catch you later. All right, bye. bye.